Hello, this is Patrick W. Crawford from Muak Productions, and this is a tutorial showing how to create a simple and very powerful crowd simulation. So to start, we're going to create our actual crowd, the individual characters or people who are gonna make up of our crowd. We're gonna set up their animations. Then we're gonna create our actual crowd simulation particle system. And at that point, we're going to shape our mesh area to fit our scene a little bit. We're gonna set up some collisions and boundaries for our simulation. And then we're gonna look at layering in multiple simulations to really make the crowd seem lively and not overly uniform. So why would you wanna do this? You can imagine you've created a scene, you've animated your foreground characters fighting or walking or doing whatever they do, but the setting is a market or a town or a city, which those are not typically empty. They have other people in them. And if you want to populate this background, the sort of default way you may think to do it is take your rig, duplicate it a hundred times, and then you'll find that your scene is suddenly running very, very slow. On top of that, you'd have to individually animate each of those characters. That's no fun. So instead, I'm offering here a very powerful and easy way to create a crowd that is responsive, reactive to the environment, and you can easily add hundreds to thousands of characters with very little impact to your performance. It's actually very efficient and works very well. So to get started, I'm going to set up a little bit of a scene. I will call out that this is tailored to Minecraft crowd simulations, but you can create a similar effect with more realistic characters. You'll find that one of the keys is we're using shape keys in a clever way to accomplish our needs. But to get started, I recommend you import a world either from Mineways or JMC to OBJ. We're looking for a world that has kind of a nice flat open area. We can deal with some inclines and hills or steps, but for the simplicity of this tutorial, we're gonna mostly focus on a flat world. So you can see I am using the MC prep add-on. It's not a requirement. You could also just do these steps yourself. I've prepped the materials a little bit and I create a simple world and sky shader. And the main thing you should realize is I have a nice open market scene. I want to populate the scene with a bunch of characters. Maybe I'm doing a flyover of, of the King's Landing. So this actually happens to be an export of a world created by Westeros Craft. It's a, a great map created of King's Landing from Game of Thrones. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in our baseline character. Now, the easiest way is if you have the MC prep add-on to go into the spawner, click reload assets, and then after a moment, you'll see all of your assets show up here. And then I'm gonna search by clicking that little arrow for shape key, or just type in shape. And then you'll get this option for adding the shape key player. I'm gonna click into my screen so that my 3D cursor is in a, a nice convenient place. And then upon pressing spawn shape key player, You'll see that I now have in my outliner a group called shape key player and then my actual shape key player itself. So if I were to zoom in on my player here and then press play, you would see that nicely there's a, a already set up animation of our player walking. So this is some upfront work that I've done for you. I've pre-animated multiple different animation sequence, which we're gonna take a look at in a moment. So bearing this in mind, if you're using another rig such as a more realistic character or a non-Minecraft sort of scenario, you would need to set up your own shape keys. I may do a tutorial about that in the future. The next thing I'm gonna do is actually kind of separate and structure my scene a little bit better. So looking at the outliner again, you'll see I have my top level scene collection, then the default collection, then I have my shape key player. I am actually going to rename this to be my character spawns, for instance. Doesn't really matter what you name it, but I'm just calling out that these are gonna be the source characters. And I'm gonna drag this up to the collection scene. And this way, my actual collection there is separate from my characters over here. Now I'm gonna disable my main collection scene and then focus on my characters over here. The next thing I'm gonna do is one, I'm gonna save. At this point in time, Blender 2.8 is still a beta, so it's a, not a bad idea to save often. I re would you know, recommend doing that. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna jump over to the animation tab. 
And in this animation tab, I'm gonna change the left hand most window to be a non-linear animation window. You could also just adjust your existing windows to match this layout. I just find it easy to have the ability to jump between these two layouts. Next, I'm gonna press the home key, given that I have the shape key player selected. So I'm gonna jump over to where this character is. And you'll notice that the, the UI was not prepped in this window. Normally you could go into the MC prep add-on and press improve UI. Or if you just wanna do it manually under the last dropdown in the 3D kind of scroll bar at the top, I'm gonna go down and click textured. Now we can see our lovely Steve character. So if I were to press play now, again, you can see our nice animation set up. Uh, it's actually driven by these NLA strips or nonlinear animation strips. And this is really the crux of how we're gonna be setting up our simulation. If I were to disable this option here, you'd see that our character is no longer walking around. He's just static. If I were to enable the run legs and then the run arms, we now have a running animation. If I disable the run arms and then use run arms flee, you kind of have this fling animation, or you can use this flapping one. And so you can see we have a number of animations that are already set up for you. You definitely can customize them. You can definitely create your own poses. The way this is working is you know, you'll notice that we actually don't have any armature here. These are all purely driven by shape keys. These animation strips, each one of these is an action that consists of individual keyframes that are just controlling how much of one shape key to use versus another. So with my rig, quote unquote, or really my character selected, if I were to go to this green triangle icon in the properties windows, you'd be able to see all of the shape keys. And so I have named them, so you could create your own nice shape keys from the base or rest pose if you wanted to or you could create and adjust the existing ones. Uh, you can see there's a number of options. So for example, if I were to disable these two here and you know adjust the, the leg spread, for example, this is maybe a nice like standing pose if, he, if he's not moving or doing anything. And then I could use, uh, let's see, maybe he leans more to one side. So he's leaning one way or another. So these I don't have set up in actions right now, but these are ways you could further customize the sequences that are already set up. But for now, we're gonna be a little bit simple. We're just gonna use the out of the box walking animation that we have here. So the nice thing about this and what you'll find is it's very easy to create duplicates of this rig. I'm only duplicating one object and it's fully responsive. I could have a hundred of these in the scene and I'd still be running at a pretty high frame rate. There's, there's really no drop here. Now, the next thing we want to do for our simulation is actually, you know, change our characters. We don't want to have only Steve's walking around, of course. So again, you can set up your own files manually. If you don't have the MC prep add-on, you're just adjusting the shader nodes. But for this, we are going to be using the skin swapper. It makes it very easy. So you'll notice that I have uh, a few skins that came with the add-on slash a few that I've installed myself. Uh, I could even use my username. And so this will automatically, I'll even force to re-download it to prove the point. Uh, this will automatically apply my skin based on my username from online. I could add in another one. I'm sure there's a, a user called Bobby, who knows? Bobby's watching this. You have a, a nice, lovely Stormtrooper-esque skin there. A little bit of a trooper. Uh, but you can see it's very easy to create and modify the, the, uh, the skins you have here. But we're kind of in, again, like I said, we're in King's Landing. It's a little bit more of a medieval sort of look. So instead of kind of guessing usernames and downloading it that way, I'm actually going to go in the advanced settings. And then from the skin path, I'm going to point this to a folder where I have a bunch of already downloaded skins from skin decks. So I have it under raw resources and then skins. And then you can see all the skins I have selected here. I just need to select OK, except on the folder. And now you can see that the list of skins here are those that match the folder. You can easily download as many skins as you want and create your own folder structure, or you can just use some of the ones that are provided for you here. It doesn't matter too much, but this will help make it look a little more realistic. So at this stage, I'm just gonna go through each of these skins and apply them to my characters. Now I've applied the first one here. I do wanna call out that if you go into edit mode on this rig, by default, all of the layer two of the character is selected over here. 
And so something I may wanna do is if I change to face mode and press Control I to invert my selection, now I have all the inside character selected. I'm gonna go ahead and hide that character. So I'm only looking at the second layer. If I were to press Alt H, I would bring back the, the lower layer back. Uh, again, to press hide. So I'm now only looking at the second layer of my character. Uh, I may want to use the MC Prep Select Alpha Faces button. So this is a nice and very quick way to select all of the transparent faces so that I can delete those that are not actually actually faces. And so doing that will kind of uh, delete the faces that don't need to exist because they're not actually, you know, showing any information. They're just the uh, they're just the transparent faces. Um, I will call out that that operator is not perfect. You'll see that it kind of left around some faces that are clearly transparent. Uh, it will have actually deleted a few faces that aren't transparent. So be a little bit careful. Do spot check it, but. That's a nice way to kind of uh, improve the way the, the render looks. Uh, so you could do that for all the rigs if you want to. I'm not going to. With Eevee, you don't really need to. Uh, but it makes it a little bit nicer if you can do that. So now I'm just gonna go through and apply the skins to all of these rigs, duplicating each of the rigs as soon as I get to a new skin. So just give me one minute to go through and do that on a time lapse. And so now I have all my characters on my screen. I'm gonna press N to collapse that window. Now I'm pressing the space bar. That's how you set up your Blender instance. I have all my characters walking around. Again, I'm gonna save my scene because that's a good thing to do. And I'm also gonna call out that it really does not matter where your characters are on the screen. Uh, as again, we separate out the collection so that they don't interact or conflict with each other. We have our King's Landing or our world in the collection up in here. Uh, we're still ignoring that for now. What we want to do at this stage is adjust the animation. So if we were to create a crowd simulation right now based on these characters, it would be very uniform. It wouldn't be broken up. They're all walking in the exact same pose and position. We want to vary that up a little bit. And if we were using a more advanced crowd simulation method, like another program, we could do this in a more automated way. For now, we're gonna do this by hand by just adjusting the animations a little bit on a character by character basis. So I'm gonna start by selecting this frontmost character and in the nonlinear animation window, I'm gonna go ahead and press this only current selection key. I'm also gonna deselect or collapse the scene so I can see everything a bit better. You can see here I have these animation strips set up that are how we're powering the animation like we discussed before. So in this case, I'm just gonna adjust the position of this walk cycle strip a little bit. Again, this is one that's active. You can see it has a tick box. And now you can see that this character is offset from the rest in terms of their animation. I'm gonna do the same with a few more of the characters. Uh, and you know, maybe some of them, like this guy, he seems, he seems like he's, you know, is that some, armor, then maybe he's running, a, walking a little bit slower. So I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna scale outwards a little bit. So now his animation cycle is a little bit slower than the others. This guy, he's probably running a shop. He's maybe in a rush. So I'm gonna scale this one inwards so that his walk cycle is a little bit faster than the others. And then again, adjusting it so it's offset from the rest. Uh, if your animation scene is longer than the default that's provided here, by pressing the N key with a strip selected in yellow, I can actually extend the length or the number of times that the sequence repeats by expanding out the repeat section here. So now when I expand this, you'll see that it's now a much longer sequence than all the others. And I'm just gonna go through and adjust all the steps a little bit for each of these characters. Note that every time you see a line, that's the source action being repeated one time. In fact, if I were to press tab on this selection strip, you would see down below in my Dope Sheep editor, the actual keyframes for this individual animation. And you can see which shape keys are used to create that animation. So I can change this on the fly and it would adjust for each individual repeat. Uh, but from your perspective, each line represents one cycle. So if I move it over here, then we've almost shifted a cycle backwards for that character. So I'm gonna keep going through doing this for all of these characters. I may decide to adjust it or change it up a little bit. Maybe this guy is uh, having a good time while he's walking. He's kind of banging his head. 
So he has, uh, yeah, that animation going on there. This guy, we're gonna offset him a little bit. Really what we're looking for at this phase is to make sure that the crowd just doesn't look too uniform. We can always adjust this later, but it's nice to have it looking good from the start. It's also worth calling out that the characters will not all be next to each other. So even if you have two that look like they're perfectly in sync right now in this scene, as it is here, uh, it will get broken up later. They're spawned individually independently. All right, so at this stage, I think it looks pretty good. We have some variants in the crowd. Actually, these three, these three look like they're very similar. Maybe I'm gonna, I'm gonna slow this guy down a little bit. Uh, it is worth calling out that even though I may have changed the animation speed on one or two of these for the walk cycle, you should try to keep them approximately the same. I would not mix in running animation and walking animation in the same collection. You'd be better off later actually having a separate crowd simulation for a few characters that are running. And in fact, we'll actually be doing that later. So for now, keep this all just walking speed. If there's slight variation, that's okay. But if you make it too extreme of a difference, then it'll be very clear that some of the characters are gonna be kind of slipping on the ground versus others are going, you know, on pace. All right, so never forget to save. So I'm saving once more. And I'm gonna call out that we now have all of our characters in our character spawn section over here. I'm gonna go ahead and collapse this, disable the render layer for now, or rather the collection. I'm gonna exclude it from our scene. I'm gonna re-enable our King Landing, our main scene collection here. The next step is to actually set up our simulation system. So by clicking to put my 3D cursor on the ground in the middle of our scene, I'm gonna press Shift A and then add a plane. Then I'm gonna zoom out and scale out this plane. So it's about the size of where I want characters to actually spawn on our scene. It doesn't need to be perfect. We are gonna adjust it later, but just get something that's a good starting point for now. You'll see that I've actually, it's now added this into a, in the scene collection layer. So it's not actually part of the collection. That's fine. I actually want to move this plane into its own collection. So I'm gonna press M and then under the move to collection or create a new collection, I'm gonna type in crowd sim. So it's very clear that this plane is part of the crowd sim. I'm also going to rename this plane to be crowd emit because this is going to be the plane which quote unquote emits our actual crowd simulation. So I'm going to go back and disable our, our main render scene collection just briefly. We'll come back to it later. The next step is, I'm, I'm going to adjust my window a little bit, under the properties panel, I'm going to click on the particles tab, and then I'm going to create a new particle system. We're going to call this walkers. Now I'm going to both rename it in the list up here as well as down here. These are different unique data blocks, so it would be a good idea to name both of them. Next, I'm going to lower the number down to 100 to start off with, and I'm going to make sure that the start frame and the end frame are the same. We want all characters to come into existence at the same time. And then I'm gonna also make sure that the particles or the characters last longer than the end of our scene. So if your scene is 500 frames long, then you wanna adjust the lifetime to be longer than that. Next, we're going to actually set up our characters. So instead of using render as halo, we're gonna change this to be a collection. And as you can imagine, under the collection section of the render section, expand it if it is not already, under instance collection, we're gonna click here and then select our actual crowd simulation. So recall that we called it character spawns. Uh, hindsight actually says I probably should have renamed it and I'll do so now, character walkers. So these are the walking characters. So let's be clear about that. So I've renamed it to be character walkers. And now if I were to press play, you would see not too much actually. Uh, going to the beginning of my, my frames, you can see we have lots of little dots that are, that are spawning and dropping. Uh, these are actually just very small characters. The problem is we need to increase the scale to be a size of one. And now we can actually see our characters kind of distributed throughout here. A couple other good things at this point to do is one under source. Faces is good for a plane. We can continue to use faces. It may be good to use random instead of jittered. Uh, don't mind too much if the screen kind of updates in kind of a weird way. The first two frames or so of our particle system are always gonna be a little bit strange. So I recommend that whatever is what you export is 
frame two or three or later. But if I were to press play, you'll see that our characters, yeah, they kind of write themselves up properly. Uh, the next thing you'll note is, yes, they are still falling down into oblivion. That's not ideal. So now we're going to create a collision plane. This is going to be the actual ground. So I'm going to select our crowd sim just to make sure that when I create a new plane in the 3D view, the plane belongs to that crowd simulation. This is going to be our ground plane. So I'm going to scale it up to be larger than our emission plane just to make sure that if any characters walk past the emission plane that they're still on the ground. And then I'm going to, for now, I'm going to just move it down by 0.5. So I'm typing 0.5 along the z-axis. Actually, it should be negative 0.5. Uh, so now it's below my emission plane here. The next thing I'm going to do is going to rename this bottom plane to be ground, just so it's very clear. Now I'm going to go to the physics tab, which is the tab under the properties windows with the little circle. And then I'm going to enable collision. So this is going to be what's actually making sure that the particles don't go through the ground. So now when I press play, you'll find our characters stay in place. They're doing this weird bouncing thing. Uh, we need to effectively change the physics, but at this point we're already in a good stance. All right, so now with our crowd selected, and I'll even change my sequence timeline to be 100 frames, and I'm just gonna keep my play bar going. I am gonna press save as well at this stage. Again, good to do that often. Going back to the particles tab, again, with our crowd emission plane selected, which I can prove by moving this plane around, I can see it's the characters that are moving. The next thing I wanna do is under, I'm gonna collapse source as well as render for now. Under the physics section, I'm gonna expand this and change it from Newtonian physics down to Boyd's. And this is gonna be kind of what is the magic for our scene. Now, if you find that the particles don't update right away, you probably actually just want to change the seed. You may toggle this, it will help kind of invalidate the cache a little bit, which is a helpful thing. So now it will look a little bit different. It'll actually look like the characters are moving around. Uh, at this stage, I'm actually also gonna change back to my layout window just so I have a little bit of a, a bigger screen to look at for my characters here. So at this stage, we have characters walking around. This is a, a very low quality, but you know, it's a crowd simulation at this stage. You can see the characters are facing the direction they're walking and they're all walking their own pace. Uh, you'll notice some weird things like they actually are starting to float into the air a little bit, which is odd. If I were to, again, select my crowd emit plane and go back to the particles tab and change this to a thousand, you would find that, yeah, my computer is running a little bit slowly, 11 frames per second while also screen recording, uh, but it is moving. And the characters are also, yeah, like I said, they're kind of flowing to the air. It's kind of some weird ethereal gravity's gone away inception sort of moment. Uh, but just call out that you can very easily scale and increase the number of characters and it works very, very well. Uh, but let's, let's fix the issue of the characters floating around. What we really need to do is spend some time actually editing the voids and the way the void simulation is working. So to do this, under the physics tab, again, we already selected voids. Now we need to adjust some of the subsettings. So firstly, movement. We want to disable allow flight and enable allow land. This will ensure that the particles stay on the land. They're not going to float up into the air. Next, you're going to need to adjust the max land speed. Anecdotally, I know that 2.5 is about a good speed to use, uh, but really you want to check this to make sure that when a character is walking, that they're not walking much faster than their actual speed on the ground plane. So you can check this against your render scene. We'll do that in a little bit and maybe adjust the setting. The other thing you want to do is under MISC, we have the options for banking, pitch, and height. So I am going to play my animation a little bit here. You'll notice that as the characters are turning, they, they bank. They're actually leaning quite a lot. So you really want to make this banking to be zero. If you have someone who's running or a crowd simulation of individuals who are running very fast, you can maybe put that to be 0.1 or something small like that. But otherwise, this keeps them mostly upright. The other thing you may find beneficial is changing the height to be 0.5 or 0.75. Again, we're going to play with this a little bit. Uh, this has to do with the size of the voids and also how and where they interact with the ground. 
These are all things we want to make sure that our characters are not floating above the ground at any point. So the next thing to call out is the way that our characters are actually moving. What, why are they walking around the, the way they are? They're kind of clustering, actually, you'll notice. And that all has to do with the Boyd brain. So this is where Boyds are very, very powerful. They can do some very interesting things. I'm not gonna go in depth into all the settings here, but I will say is it may be helpful to add in a type of Boyd rule so essentially here you have a list of all the rules or the order of rules that each of these particles or characters follow. And so you can see here they have a rule of separate and flock. So the first thing they're doing is they're separating, they're kind of dispersing out, but then the last rule that applies is they're actually flocking together. So these are kind of actually contradicting a little bit. That actually helps break up the animation and, and the scene. Maybe just to demonstrate briefly, don't do it yourself. But if I were to only have separate in here, and start from the beginning, you'll see that the characters, they kind of don't move too much. They're already pretty far separate from each other. Walking in any one direction would actually get them closer to another void, so they're mostly not moving. If I were to change this and make it be flock, then you'll find that all of them are gonna start coming together into little clusters because they're trying to flock together. So, uh, and then there's tons of other options. You could have them actually follow an object. So if you use follow leader, then you can animate an object which they'll kind of follow behind with a little bit of a delay. That's also a very cool feature. But for our general purpose animation here, our general purpose scene of characters walking around in a market, let's actually add in a void collision, move that to the top and enable a void collision with voids as well as deflectors. I'm gonna add another one for separate. And again, I'm gonna move that so it's between a void and flock. And then now when I play, you'll see it looks a little bit nicer. So they're still kind of flocking together a little bit, maybe more than we'd want them to. You can also adjust the fuzziness of the rules. The fuzziness really applies which ones apply first. So play with this, 0.5 is not a bad value. I may even lower this a little bit down so it's more like this. This is definitely an area you can play with a lot, the different types of Boyd brains and how they behave. Uh, in fact, I may even up this to be more like 200 characters uh, just to see what it looks like if some more characters in the scene, just to make sure that's staying a bit dispersed. Uh, I still don't really like how much that they are flocking into clusters to get lo lots of this this empty area. So, you know, maybe I'm actually even gonna write out remove the flock and let, let's see what happens here. Um, yep, so they're still moving a little bit. You know, may maybe they need some kind of, um, they need more separation. So maybe if I put separate up here, you know, I, I could play around with this a lot. Um, here, the issue is you find that characters will just be stuck and not moving. You know, this, this character isn't actually moving anywhere, so maybe it's still important that you have flock in here. So I'll maybe put that down and add another, another avoid, or maybe there's an average speed, for instance. And so you can set what the average speed would be. Yeah, so there's, there's a few options. So you can definitely play around with this. Uh, we'll, we'll keep with this for now. And then let's move on to actually making sure our characters fit our scene. So I'm gonna press save again. I'm gonna re-enable our collection, which reminder, this is our actual render scene. And in fact, maybe let's just call it that render scene. Or or rather, this is our king's landing. That's that's really what this is. This is the market, it's the it's the actual city. So what are we doing? We wanna make sure that our crowd simulation is actually touching the floor. We put our plane more or less in the right place, but we're probably gonna to have to adjust it a little bit further. So if I zoom in and move my camera so that I'm very level with the ground, you'll see pretty clearly that no, our characters are actually floating up a little bit, definitely more than we want them to. So to adjust this, I'm going to move my ground down a little bit. So I have the ground plane selected. I'm pressing G and then the Z button. And then on the down arrow, I'm just nudging it down a little bit. And then I'm gonna go back to the beginning of my cycle and see how that looks. So it looks better, but I can see they're not, they're still floating a little bit. So I'm gonna move down my plane a little bit more. Just kind of moving it down, going back, playing the animation again. And now I can see, yes, they're definitely going through the ground a little bit. 
their feet are just clipping through, not a, too much. I'm actually gonna press Z and then move it up two or three ticks. Uh, you really want the feet to be just barely clipping through just to prove that they are in fact touching the ground and not, uh, not floating. Uh, so the other thing that may be helpful while you're doing this, I'm gonna reselect my crowd simulation. So this is the one that has the particle system on it. Then under the viewport display, I'm actually going to disable show emitter briefly. Uh, this will help us actually see exactly what we wanna look at. And I can see, uh, actually, yes, I was making a mistake. It looks like the, the characters are, well, maybe it's okay. It looks like it's clipping a little bit more than perhaps I want. Uh, you, you can definitely play with the ground plane a little bit and really get to what you have desired. But now I can really see, yes, it's, it's actually the, the textured ground plane that these characters are interacting with and their feet are barely touching through it, which is, which is just about perfect. So at this stage, we, we have a market. If you don't look too closely, you would think that maybe we're almost done. Uh, we could add some more characters and that'd be fine. But, but really what we want to do next is make sure we don't have the characters walking through places that can't. And so you can see where this is happening. If I select my characters, they're, they're just freely walking through the stands, through the actual blocks. Uh, obviously we want to avoid that. So the next thing we're going to do is set up the collisions. Now I'm going to press save once more. And now I'm going to go ahead and add a cube into the screen. And to maybe explain what we're about to do, we're gonna add geometry in the form of cubes into our scene to represent everywhere we one, want characters not to spawn, and two, we want characters not to walk into. And so we're gonna do this by creating a bunch of cubes and then joining them together, and then using that to cut away from the source emitting block as well as add collisions to this block. So let's add in a few as an example. So I've just added a cube. I'm gonna move this over to our center over here, making sure that's staying above the ground. I'm gonna scale it along the X axis, and then that needs a little bit more on the, the, the Y axis here as well. And so make sure it's just kind of appropriately sized. Make sure it goes above the height of the voids themselves, but also cuts in below the floor. That's very important make these collision boxes bigger than the size of the actual objects they should be avoiding. Uh, it's better to have them not get too close than it would be to have them walk through the object. Um, so this this object here, uh, I am noting that I have started to create this under the King's Landing group. I'm actually gonna move this by pressing M into a new collection, and I'm gonna call this Collide. And I'm gonna move this collection from its own group into the crowd simulation group. So that way it's all kind of contained together. The other thing I'm gonna do is start to create copies of this cube. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll reset the scale, scale it to fit each of these little stands. It's probably good that each of these stands has one of their own, one of their own of these boxes. So moving this around, duplicating it, duplicating it again. I will say that it's important to make sure these boxes don't overlap. This makes sure that there aren't any issues, which you'll understand more in a moment. But again, I'm just placing a few of these around the scene. Maybe I'll make this just one long one here so that no one can walk into that. Uh, this one could probably be a little bit, a little bit wider. So I'm gonna scale on the X axis. Again, I'm making care that these boxes don't overlap at all. That's gonna be important. And we'll add another one over here. And that will be a good example for now. Obviously, you'd want to do this for all the obstacles in your scene, including small obstacles such as these blocks over here. So even these little musical jukeboxes down here, uh, you'd want to make sure that these are also accounted for. So I'm going to scale this along the y-axis, and I'm going to put this in here. So I'm going to make sure that no characters are spawning on top of or going through these objects in the middle of our scene. I'm gonna adjust this, go over here. I'm gonna scale this along the Y axis. Again, doesn't matter if you block off too much space, it matters much more if you don't block off enough space because then it's very it's very clear when the characters are walking through these, these obstacles. All right. So like I said, you'd wanna spend more time doing this for the rest of your scene, but for now, I'm gonna go ahead and select all of the objects that we just created. 
The easiest way to do this is to right click the collection called Collide that we renamed earlier. And then we're gonna go down and select objects. Next, I'm gonna press Control J to join the objects. So now it's all together, it's all one object. Next, under the collision settings, I'm gonna press Collide. And now this will prevent the characters from colliding into these objects. So I'm gonna press Save again, and now I'm gonna press Play. You'll find that, yes, we, we aren't having our characters newly running into these objects, they're kind of avoiding them. However, we do still have the issue of, if I were to enable, uh, let's say, wire, wireframe mode, uh, you can see that there's lots of characters actually, yeah, that actually wasn't so good, hard to see there. Um, there's actually characters that, here we go, we can see it very easily now. There are characters that are stuck inside the collision mesh, so it actually spawned inside the collision mesh. So the next thing we need to do is actually cut away from our spawning point for the simulation to make sure that the characters don't spawn inside of these obstacles. So the way we're gonna do that is I'm going to disable our King's Landing render scene briefly just so we can see things more easily. Next, I'm going to select our character emit plane. If you'll recall, we actually disabled under the particle settings the show emitter. So back under viewport display, I'm gonna briefly show emitter again so it's very clear. Then I'm gonna go under the modifier tab. You'll see we have the particle modifier that was set up for us already. And then we're gonna add a modifier. We're going to add a Boolean. If I move this Boolean to the top, I'm going to then use this eyedropper and select the collision cube, which is called cube.012. In fact, let's, let's rename that better, collision cube. All right, so now if I select our particle system again, it should have the Boolean modifier as well as the particles. If I actually hide our collision cube for a moment, and then I change, actually difference is correct, that is exactly what we want. I'm gonna also hide the ground. We can see very clearly that yes, this has worked. It has in fact cut away from our source emission plane if I click apply, and then I were to animate my characters, you would see that yes, they're only spawning where they need to be. All right, so a couple of things that may happen when you do this. If you create little pieces of geometry that are too small for the characters to walk around in, you'll end up with characters like this that are kind of stuck and will kind of act strangely. The best thing you can do is go into edit mode and just cut away at those faces. Uh, this is a little bit more advanced, but if I press F3 and then type for knife, I think you can also just press the K button. I'm gonna just cut a little bit here, press enter, and now I can just outright delete this face. Uh, I'm gonna do the same over here, so I'm gonna press K and then cut away from this corner and cut there. So now I can delete this face outright because it's just too thin. We don't want anyone walking there. I'm gonna do the same over here, so K, cut away, and then I'm gonna select this face and cut it out. So now this looks pretty safe. There's no, no areas that are maybe too, too thin. You know, maybe to be safe, I'll also cut out this section here. I'm gonna press enter, then K again, and create those two. Now I'm gonna press X to delete that face. Now this looks pretty safe. It should be safe for anyone to spawn anywhere on this sheet. Um, so at this point, I can reshow my collisions just to just to keep those in mind. I'm also going to reshow my King's Landing, my actual render scene. The next thing we want to make sure is that we don't actually show our emissions and our collision objects in the final render. We need to make sure that they are only used for the simulation. So in order to do that, so under the particle systems, if you click on the, again we're making sure that we have our crowd emission object selected. We're gonna go under the render settings. This is where we've set it to collection as before. We're gonna make sure that we do not show the emitter in render. So we're disabling that setting. It's not gonna update the interface exactly. Uh, again, if we want the interface or the viewport to update, then we'll also disable show emitter. Now we, we no longer will see the ground in both the render or the viewport, which is exactly what we want. Next, we wanna make sure that our collision objects are still in the scene. They're still acting as colliders for the particle system, but we don't actually want to render in the end. So to do that, 
we're gonna adjust the restrict render option. And if you don't already have the camera icon next to the eye icon in the outliner, then you can pretty easily enable it here by going down and selecting the camera icon. So note it's the one that says globally disable and renders. I'm gonna tick that. And now I'm gonna make sure that I select my collision group, not my crowd plane, but actually my collision group. I'm gonna disable or restrict render for the collision group as well as for our collision ground. You know, the ground likely will be below the actual physical ground of our scene, but it's still good to make sure you don't have it poking through anywhere. So just disable there. And I'm also just gonna turn off the colliders as well as the grounds for now, just so we can see only our actual crowd simulation. So at this stage, we're, we're looking pretty good. And if I really want to, I, I can say, hey, you know, this looks good. I actually wanna bump up the, the number of people in my crowd. So I'm gonna select my particle system. I'm gonna up this to say 500, and then I'm gonna let that play out a little bit. And yeah, I think that actually looks pretty nice at this stage. So, you know, sort of next steps, things you could do, you could actually layer in multiple animations. So right now we have a bunch of people walking around, which is, which is great. Um, but let's say I also wanna have people running around. And so to do that, you know, the simplest way, I'll do this very quick, a little bit less instruction as before, but if we go back to the animation section, disable King's Landing, and if you recall, we actually have our characters group here. I'm gonna go ahead and just duplicate this whole collection. And so now I have characters.walkers, I'm gonna rename this to be runners. I'm gonna disable our old walkers, and then press in the home key. Uh, let's say I have uh, not as many people that are running around, so I'm just gonna delete uh, a number of these, these rigs here. Just to, just to speed this up a little bit. Uh, let's say we have uh, you know these individuals running around. So we only have five characters that are running, let's say. And I'm gonna change them from using the walk arm and legs to using the run arms and run normal. And so all of these characters are gonna be running around. Uh, maybe, maybe this person's actually fleeing, so her, her, her arms are up in the air. Although I don't really know what she's fleeing around. Maybe, maybe she's not fleeing, but she could just be excited, happy to be in the market. I don't know. Uh, so all of these characters are running. Actually, you know, probably doesn't make sense for a knight to be running around as much. It might be hard for them to move that fast. And in the same way as before, I'm gonna make sure I am offsetting both of these sequences a little bit so that they don't look exactly the same as everyone else when they're running. So we're gonna offset them a little bit. I may scale this one a little bit like we were doing before. It's got to be a little bit faster. And so now when I run or press the space bar, I have my running characters. Now to go back to our crowd simulation object and selecting our crowd emission object, the way we're gonna do this is we're going to press the plus icon. We're gonna call this runners. And then what we're actually gonna do is from this dropdown, we're gonna select the walkers and we're gonna press the two icon. This is basically helping us to duplicate the existing walker crowd simulation. We're gonna call this actual particle systems, which could be shared. We're gonna call this runner. We're gonna drop the number to let's say like 100. Uh, there's still voids, but the actual movement is gonna be faster. Maybe it's more like four. Uh, and then under the render option, we're still using collection, but instead of character walk, we're gonna use character run. And so now if I were to zoom out and let's actually change back to our layout. If I were to play here, we can see my, my viewport is running a little bit slower at this stage. We have about 600 characters in the scene, uh, but you can see that there are some characters who are running about while others are simply walking. And there is a difference in speed because we've set up the, the speed to be faster for those that are running than those that are walking. Um, so that is all great. Uh, you could even layer this further with uh, maybe there's a crowd of people who are just standing or, or you know, sitting around in front of the actual podium or this sort of, maybe it's an execution or a, uh, a stage of some sort, something like that. Um, so you can, you can kind of layer in multiple types of simulations all at once. But in a nutshell, we have created a, a pretty effective and convincing crowd at this stage. So zooming pretty far out, it looks pretty, pretty convincing. And even getting pretty close, you know, things that I may want to adjust further is I could say, okay, 
yeah, there's still some characters that are intersecting a little bit. Maybe I need to make sure there's more, you know, I'll, I'll play with the void brain settings to avoid that. I may also decide to play around with the seed values for each of my simulation layers. So for the walkers as well as the runners, if I find that there's some weird collisions or just the behavior of some of the characters directly in front of the camera don't look good, I can change the, the seed. It's kind of like throwing the dice again, kind of resetting it. Uh, it's not going to dramatically make the overall simulation look differently, but it's a way to kind of just change it a little bit without actually toggling some of the other settings. Maybe I'm finding that as characters are walking, that their walking speed is too fast compared to the ground. So, you know, if you're walking, watching like this green character here, you know, he's slipping a little bit, it's not too bad, but maybe I wanna decrease or increase the speed, the actual landing speed. So again, that's the setting over here, the max land speed. You know, maybe I also wanna increase the land acceleration. So when they start walking, they are walking at full speed immediately. I mean, they have different settings for the runners as well as the, the land folk or the, the walkers. And so that way they start walking at their maximum speed right away. Uh, these are all things you kind of play around with. And then lastly, this is a very important final step that you should take. It's important that you bake your animations. So I have my emitter plane selected. So I have all my characters selected. Under the particle tabs, you can see there's a section for cache, that's C-A-C-H-E. Expanding this, you can see all the options for baking. And if I widen this a little bit further, it'll actually go into a two column format. You'll see the option to bake, bake all dynamics, delete all bakes and so forth. So just to explain this a little bit further, you can see in my timeline window, there is a red and a light red bar that shows what's been cached so far. But every time I were to play around, if I were to jump around, it hasn't cached the previous step, so it's gonna create some odd behaviors if I were to kind of go back and forth potentially. You know, here it may not be as obvious, but you'll find that if you're rendering or moving to another computer or opening it for the first time, it's gonna look a little bit different every time. That can be frustrating. So baking your simulation is a way to lock it down, make it set. And the way we do this is, you know, it's good to delete all bakes first, just be safe. And then I'm gonna press bake all dynamics. And here it goes very quickly. If you had some other simulations going on in your file that may take a little bit longer, but this has created the cache for both of the simulations individually. Noticing that if I want to delete just one of the bakes, such as maybe the walkers were fine, but the runners look off, I could delete the bake for the runners and then just bake the runners again like that. They technically are independent, but this way, now when I were to open the file again or move it to another computer to render, everything would be set, there'd be no oddities. So as a little bit of a recap, for this crowd simulation tutorial, we imported a world and did a little bit of prepping. We added our characters and adjusted their animations. Uh, small call it, I may create a tutorial about the shape key player and creating shape key animations in the future. So maybe look out for that. We then created our particle system. We set up our collisions for our simulation. And then we layered in a couple of crowds for different behaviors. And finally, we looked at tweaking some settings and baked our animation. All right, so I hope this tutorial has been helpful. Like I said, I may also work on a tutorial in the future to help you create your own animations for the individual characters, actually leveraging that shape key player or creating your own. So comment below if you think that'd be something that's useful. Check out the other tutorials and definitely let me know if you create any crowd simulations this way. I would love to see it. All right, until next time and happy blending.